Hi folks, it's Andy. Welcome to this week's Kendo Rant. I've got some fantastic questions for you this week. We've got plenty to get through. Uh, before we jump in though, don't go typing in the comments. Skip to whatever time, by the way, because I'll just delete it, all right? So just stop doing that. Yeah, you've got to watch this bit. It's important. It's what keeps the channel alive. Um, <laughs> uh, buy a t-shirt from the shop below, uh, Ken, uh, Teespring, um, you could do that if you want to support us. Um, more importantly, though, you could shop at kendostar.com. That's my website. It's on my t-shirt there because it's a company that I own that provides fantastic, amazing, wonderful kendo equipment everywhere around the world with the best rated online. So do your shopping at kendostar.com. Don't forget to subscribe and more importantly, ring the kendo bell. We already talked last week about the science behind ringing the kendo bell and how it will exponentially increase your kendo ability just by ringing the bell. Uh, it could be, it's not a prediction. Okay, so uh, first question. Uh, hi Andy, two questions for you this week, fantastic. Uh, what is the black dot on the door behind you uh, that shows on the video near to your left shoulder? Uh, and two, I have some of the beautiful reversible chikawa from a very good online kendo shop, uh, kendostar.com. Uh, <laughs> but they're still quite stiff, resulting in them, uh, resulting in them not laying flush uh, against the men uh, and the gap between the himo and the men. Uh, is there a way to soften them up and shape them better? Okay, so one, the black dot behind the door, you mean this thing, right? Uh, it's This door's painted white with quite thick gloss paint and it's just chipped. It's been here like 30 odd years. So, <laughs> yeah, um, it's, yeah, it's... It's just the chip and the paint, it's nothing significant. Uh, I haven't repainted the door, so maybe I should move the scientific chart down to cover it. Um, two, uh, about the reversible Chichikawa. So they're the ones that we offer, and they are a little bit thick and they're a bit stiff because it's basically a layer of Kurozan and a layer of uh, Inden um, synthetic deer skin. So it's a little bit thicker than a regular Chichikawa. Um, you can soften them up with your hands quite a lot. Uh, and then the only thing you can do then is once you put them on, just pull the hemo really tight and that'll help them sit flush against the men. And then with use, they will soften up. It's the only real way, I'm afraid. Um, I know they are a little bit stiff at first, but they will, they will sort of soften down with use. All right. Uh, next one, when you're doing stretches at the start of practice, do you go top to bottom after jumping in place, uh, head and neck to shoulders and down, or do you start with the leg, hamstring and work up? Well, I don't think it makes a difference which really, does it? Does it? Don't know, I'm no expert in that sort of thing, but generally uh, I start at the bottom and work up. Um, so yeah, uh, stretching the legs and what have you. Um, but I don't think it would make a difference if you did it the other way around at all. Uh, next one, is it possible to reuse a mune from an old door and attach it to a new lower portion? Uh, that's the door die, yeah? Um, I have a very sentimental fibre door from my youth which has a mune that's in perfect condition and I'd like to preserve it and keep using, but the fibre portion has seen better days. I love your videos and company and wish your family all the best. Thank you very much. Um, it's, it's, pos it's certainly possible. Um, however, it's expensive. <laughs> Unfortunately, one of the things that costs the most about, unless it's a bamboo doll, but one of the things that uh, costs the most with making a doll is, is actually assembling it. The mune is, is, is quite expensive. The door die, especially if it's a synthetic one, not so much uh, compared to the whole set. But putting it together is quite labor intensive. Um, and what you're talking about is not just putting it together, but taking it completely apart um, and then putting it back together again. So it's possible, it just, it can often be cheaper than buying a new one. But if it's sentimental, I can totally understand why you might want to do that. Certainly something we can help you with. Um, just hit us up with an email, mail at kendostar.com. Uh, and obviously we'll do the best we can in terms of price for it. Um, but we'd love to help you with it, especially if it's something sentimental. Um, I think we can do a fantastic job for you. Um, and yeah, we'd be delighted to help. Uh, next one. Hi Andy, I'm looking into getting a new Hakama since mine is black and I've been using it since I started Kendall. I saw the Gaia Hakama on your web on, on your site. What does it mean by pleat locked? Uh, and sadly, you don't have the size 26 as I'm 173 centimeters in height. Should I go for a 25 or a 27? Uh, will it be suitable for regular training? Um, and another question. I noticed that all the time, in all my time training Kendall, Katate Waza is hardly taught. Is it frowned upon? Okay, uh, I've got a fantastic answer to that. Um, I'll tell you it right after this.
Okay, there we are. So uh, <laughs> uh, here we are on the Kendo Star website um, and we're talking about the uh, Samurai Blue Gaia Elite uh, featherweight pleat lock hakama. If you're watching this in the future, this is probably not available anymore because it's going to be discontinued and that's why we're selling it at this ridiculously low price. Um, right, so uh, the first question was, is what what is the pleat lock? Can you see on the, the hakama, there's pleats? Uh, I'm pointing at the screen with my hand and you can't see it. Well, the pleats uh, on the actual, the, the pleats on the front of the hakama, they have a stitch running down the pleats to keep the pleats in place, all right? And especially if this is a synthetic hakama, um, it just helps keep the pleats there even when you wash it, all right? So um, that's what the pleat lock stitching is. It's that stitching there. In terms of sizes, now these are, like I say, these are being discontinued, so we haven't got more stock coming. Um, that's why we're selling them at this great price. Um, you said you're 130, uh, sorry, 173 centimeters tall, which is about the same height as myself. Um, you'll be perfectly, I'd, I'd go with a 25 rather than a 27. And if it's a little bit short, it probably won't be because actually the Gaia tend to run a little bit longer than regular Hakama. Um, so actually I think a 25 will be just fine for you. Um, so if you go with a 25, if, if you feel like it's a little bit short, just wear it a little bit lower. That's perfectly acceptable. Um, and do it that way, okay? Um, I think you had another question. Let's get get back to the, the question sheet. Okay, you also asked if it would be suitable for regular training. Yeah, it's perfect for regular training. Um, it's it's almost what it's designed for. It's, it's a great Hakama for regular, regular training uh, because it looks great, but it's synthetic, so it dries quickly and can be washed very easily. Um, and the other question, uh, you notice in your time at training that Katatewaze is hardly taught, is it frowned upon? No, it's not that it's frowned upon. Um, it's just that it's not that useful um, it's a huge gamble, like if you mess it up, you're in real trouble. So it's not a super useful waza. It's not, um, it's, it's, it's not frowned upon. It's just extremely situational. And for the most part, outside of Japan, unless you're training like for several hours every day, it's not worth giving it dojo time unless you just want to do it for fun, which is fine, but like it won't make you better at it, <laughs> you know? Um, so that's why it's hardly taught. I mean, there's there's only two real katate waza for the most part, especially for people who do chudan, um, which is katate ski, so ski with one hand. Um, and that has an advantage over morote ski in that it's, morote ski being the two-handed, in that it's you can do it from a further distance away. So it's a longer range technique. Um, and similarly with katate men, which would be a, a one hand men strike, but like it takes a long time to perform katate men compared to like a regular tobikomi men. So it's very, very hard to, uh, to pull off. Um, and then if you miss or you mess it up, you're, you're totally exposed. So, uh, that's, that's why you just don't see very much of it. And not only that, even if you hit, it's super hard to be able to do it well enough to make Ippon. That's why, like, doing Jordan, you have to train Jordan loads in order to be able to do strikes that meet the criteria of Yuko Datotsu. And if you don't have a good foundation of that um, in the first place, in other words, having practiced at Chudan for a long time for the most part, um, it becomes really, really tough um, to just do Jordan when you haven't got that base. So, yeah. Uh, next one, hypothetically speaking, if an opponent lost his shinai after you hit him and you caught it and assumed a nito no kamae, would that A, can count as zanshin, and B, uh, who would receive hansoku? Um, so, if you, hit the, sh if you hit, the, hit the opponent and, let's say, hypothetically, uh, you made a strike that was good enough to qualify as you called atotsu, uh, and for some reason there, Shinai went flying in the air and then you caught it. No, it wouldn't qualify as Zanshin. Um, I would count that as the opposite um, of Zanshin because you're just concentrating on looking at the Shinai and trying to catch it and look, look. I'm going to use air quotes cool because I don't think it looks cool um, to do that. Um, yeah, uh, it's not Zanshin. Um, and who'd receive the Hantoku? It would be... Uh, the person that let go of the shinai. Uh, next one. Hi, Andy. Thanks for the info regarding the kendo books last week. I've now ordered them uh, and they're on the way. My question is, is uh, when are you going to write your book? You already mentioned it a few weeks ago. I'm sure it would, be making interest it would make interesting reading, especially with your experiences both here and around the world and especially in Japan. I'm ready to order my coffee. <laughs> oh, well, that's very nice. Thank you. Um, I, I mean, yeah, it's, it's it's an idea I've had. I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm not sure if 
I, 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 I'm still on the kendo journey, you know, so I know will be until I die, I guess. So I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll think about it. I'll give it some thought. All right. Um, I have been told quite a few times, actually, people would like it if I wrote a book, um, whether it was instructional or or more sort of about the experience of, I had. If I was to do it, to be honest, I'd probably do it. There was a book by um, six time All Japan champion uh, uh, Miyazaki Masahiro. He had a book out, I think it was called uh, Miyazaki Masahiro no Kendo or something like that. Uh, and the first half of the book was like technical, like showing you different techniques and how he sort of did techniques. And then the second half was like, I think it was like interviews, part one with him. I don't have the book anymore. I used to have it and I, I, I gave it away. But um, it, it was like, uh, I think he had interviews with his rivals and stuff like that. Um, now, I don't have rivals, I don't think. Um, some other people might disagree. But, uh, <laughs> um, I, you know, I'd, I'd be interested to do something like that. I think it would be quite quite cool um, if I ever get the time to sit down and do it. <laughs> um, next one. Um, this is quite a long one. Hi, Andy. Could you share your impressions on the current burger trends? What sort of stuff are people ordering the most of and what? Are they looking for in a burger at the moment? I've noticed that Matt Dordai has been a popular choice for some time, but I could be wrong. Uh, what would you say is a burger trend that isn't getting att the attention it deserves? Um, on another note, I, can uh, I consider purchasing the Ken Kinjurishi all-purpose shinais that are currently on sale. How are they different to the regular all-purpose shinais Kendall Star offers? Uh, and lastly, my girlfriend got herself a new white bug set and would like to get the Korean style black and white uniform to go with it. I find it quite cool since her white bug has many black features such as black member chain door dye. Uh, and there are no rules that would prohibit her from wearing white with a bit of something special. Uh, could you please share your thoughts on that choice of uniform? Thanks. Okay, so first one. Hi Andy, could you share the impressions on current burger trends? Um, so... <clears throat> Until reasonably recently, I'd say about three or four years ago, the trends in Borger were to have the member on very, very short, even inside the line of the shoulder. Um, and also uh, to have it very narrow. So there were lots of uh, high level competitors in Japan that were having order made uh, Borger with the men but on very, very small. So it was very short in this direction and it was very narrow this way. So it's actually a large portion of the head, the, a, a portion of their head was sticking out the back. Um, part of it was, it, it was thought to look good uh, and part of it was to reduce the weight. Um, also, uh, back in back in um, much you know maybe like twenty years ago, um, really tight stitching was was really popular and common. Uh, and these days, much wider stitching is uh, can is it tends to be more popular, um, and it's even considered like it's more practical because it offers more protection. Uh, but these days, it's actually considered um, like people like the look of it. Um, and I, I do, I, I buy into that um, and I particularly buy into the protective qualities it gives and which is why you see stuff like the Kendo Star um, series um, that we do. Um, <clears throat> uh, you're right about Matt Dordai uh, being popular. They have been popular because they don't scratch the same um, in the same way as gloss ones do. Um, but yeah, uh, the other thing that's changed, I'd say, and this is again, this is probably about 10, 15 years ago, it started to change, is the shoko embroidery on the ago on the mune. It used to be quite intricate patterns and now they use generally just use dot stitches. Uh, and I quite like that look as well. Um, <clears throat> however, having said that, um, kote as well, kote as well, before I forget, uh, started to get really, really short, really, really short done like that to try and protect losing the kote strikes. Um, but the All Japan Kendo Federation two years ago, I think it was, came out regulations against this sort of thing now. So um, it's going a little bit back in the sort of more traditional um, traditional uh, style. I saw this come in, to be honest, about two, two years, two and a bit years ago. I expected that to happen because it was getting quite extreme in Japan, to be honest, these some of these trends. Uh, so that's why when I set out with the Kendo Star Design, I kind of anticipated a lot of these changes to come in. So that's why like we tend to go for slightly longer Mendai, not long, but not the, the really short ones that they used to have where they don't protect your shoulders properly. And it looks a bit, it looks a bit dumb, to be honest, when it's really short. So now they're designed to come to just about your shoulder, um, around around the level of your shoulder. So they're not in the way when you're swinging the shinai, but they're still protecting you. Uh, same with the kote. 
decent length of cote breton so you're properly protected um you know that sort of thing and that's coming back now and that's what's what i found really nice is um we designed most of the Kendo Star Borg sets with the international market in mind rather than the Japanese market. As I've said many times, is that Kendo Star is there to serve the international community because we have slightly different needs to the domestic Japanese market that are mainly focused on sh winning Shiai, winning competitions. Um, however, having said that, since we made the, the Kendo Star lineup of Borgo and we do have a store in Japan, in, in Saga Prefecture in, in Kyushu, um, like the Kendo Star brand has been getting lots of attention from domestic Japanese customers. They're really starting to like it. Um, some really high graded famous senseis um, have, uh, I'm not going to say who it is because I haven't asked him, but um, have have been using our burger and been really happy with it. And they bought it. It's not that we've given it them and asked them to do it. They, they came in, they liked it and they, they, they used it. So um, I think you'll start to see a uh, burger that looks like Kendall Star Burger a lot in Japan as well going forward. Uh, and I'll, I wouldn't be surprised if you start to see our tags showing up in some of the photos of high level tournaments and stuff, the way things are going. Um, in terms of the Kinjirushi uh, Shinai, um, <clears throat> so the other all purpose Shinai that we've got on our website, we've got the Gordiki, which are, I think are sold out at the minute, but they're on the way back in stock. Um, and we've got the KS. Uh, Kendo Star All Purpose Shinai, uh, and then we've got the current um, Kensei uh, Kinjurushi version, they're the premium version. So, um, in terms of the All Purpose Shinai, the, the Kendo Star All Purpose Shinai, comparing that to the, the Kinjurushi model, um, the Kinjurushi model is Keichiku Bamboo, it's not Madake Bamboo, which the Kendo Star. Um, all purpose one is so you'll get more flexibility of it but it's, it's made from premium cuts of keichiku though it's really nice bamboo um but you'll you'll find that they're a little bit more flexible than the kendo star uh, all purpose model uh, but most importantly other than that um they are uh they're made with a higher grade of fitting so they have a, a double folded um tsukagawa uh, on them um, so they've got a slightly nicer uh, grade of fittings than the, the regular all-purpose model. Um, and yeah, otherwise, like I say, it's just it's a premium cut of Keichiku bamboo rather than uh, a premium cut of Madake bamboo. Uh, probably the quality of the bamboo-wise, they're probably similar, in all honesty. Um, but yeah, um, we've... we've the, the Kinjurishi range is usually stuff... It's usually Shinai that are not as... Uh, mainstream as, as some of the other shinai that we offer and that's why they're a little bit more premium we use premium cuts of bamboo for them and and the the hand carved um and that's why they're a little bit more pricey because they're not as mainstream we don't have as many in fact most of them are made to order but what we've done with the uh the kensei model for this particular offer that we've got is we got a load of them in stock so they're ready to ship uh, and by doing that we managed to negotiate a slightly lower slightly uh lower cost price for us with the, uh, the, the the workshop of course right and obviously that's what we do on a regular basis with our other models as well our um, sort of mainstream models like the the kendo style uh, all-purpose model uh, and that's why we were able to get this great price on it okay so it's a great it's a great offer and it's a, it's a good chance to have a have a try of the kinjurishi series uh, and finally about the 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 black and white uniform so you're talking about the the type of uniform that the korean national team uh, usually wear uh, in the world championships which is white and it's got a black stripe down the side of the hakama um it looks to me like you you said you asked what my my thoughts on that choice of uniform are um i personally i'm not a massive fan of it i don't i, I don't think it looks that good um it looks a bit like a tracksuit um like a, a 1990s like tracksuit so yeah I, I don't like it that much. But, you know, if you like it, cool, then wear it, you know? Like, I, I don't do the bogus, bogus shame thing that people do where they're like, oh, you shouldn't wear it because I don't like it. Um, the one thing I do... The other thing about it I don't like so much is I don't... It doesn't have a koshita, and it, it, so it's all done with Velcro and stuff, and I'm, I'm not a fan of that. I like the traditional stuff myself. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, if it was me, I'd rather just use a, a, a cotton white Japanese-style one. But... Hey, if if your girlfriend likes the 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 Korean style black and white with the white with black one, you know, go right ahead. Like, no problem. Like you say, it's not regulated. Um, for the most part. 
Uh, next one. Hi, Andy. Quick, maybe silly question about Zekken. Can you use an alias for your name or is it mandatory to state your actual name? Uh, oh. <clears throat> it's not really mandatory, but it's better to. <laughs> it's better to, especially... Um, what you do need to do is whatever name you have written there in the language that you're going to be identified in at the tournament um, has to be the official name that you've entered the tournament in. Um, so I've had this experience not so much with people's individual names, but with uh, with club names or dojo names where or team names where it's been a, a reasonably friendly level tournament. Um, and because of that, teams have teams of people who aren't necessarily from the same dojo, even if they are from the same dojo, have um, have entered and they've made up like silly names for the team instead of using their dojo name um, and sort of entered themselves under these, these, these sort of comedy names. Um, and then as a shimpan, I was a shimpan, a referee at the tournament. And then when they've come to present themselves at the Shiaijo, their Zekken says something different to what their team's registered as. And then I'm, we're unaware as the shimpan as to whether the correct teams are present at the Shiai. Uh, there's a reason that that, <clears throat> that, that, uh, those rules exist and that's, that's what it's for. Um, so if you're going to use a different like name to what you're registered as, um, it sh uh, in other words, in other words, your zekken sh that you present yourself wearing at a tournament should match what you've registered your details as for the identification purposes at the tournament, if that makes sense. All right. So, you know, if you want to call yourself sort of, you know, I don't know, Sideshow Bob uh, and make yourself a zekken with that and then you register yourself under a different name like Krusty the Clown, then... No one's going to know if you're the right person for the Shi'ai, okay? Or characters from any other cartoon or TV series. <laughs> I don't particularly favour one. Uh, next one. Hi, Andy. How important is the practice of Iaido in conjunction with Kendo, besides the beauty of practising Iaido itself? Seems that most Japanese Kendoka are also Iaido practitioners, but I don't see the same trend between Westerners. Okay, uh, I can't really say how important the practice of Iaido is in conjunction with Kendo because I don't do Iaido, but I don't feel that it's that important um, for the study of Kendo. <clears throat> I've heard from people that do study Iaido as well as Kendo that Kendo has, has benefited their Iaido, uh, but not so much the other way around. But I don't know if that's true or not, and I'm not going to say it is or it isn't. But <clears throat> you do not need to do Iaido to... Um, to uh, properly practice kendo um, because it's a different it's a different martial art. Um, in terms of most Japanese kendoka also doing iaido, that's not true at all. Um, it, it's it's not correct. Most Japanese kendoka do not do iaido. Uh, iaido is is somewhat niche in Japan. It's not it's not nearly as popular as kendo is. Um, kendo is by far the most popular martial art in Japan. Um, much more popular than judo even. <clears throat> but Iaido is, is, is very, very uh, small. Um, it's, I, it's, it wouldn't surprise me if more people do Iaido outside of Japan than in Japan. Um, so yeah, uh, it, it's, it's certainly not the case that most Japanese kendoka do Iaido as well. And most, most high-level Japanese senseis don't do Iaido either. So I don't think that it's, some of them do, some of them do, but it, 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 I don't think it's a prerequisite to properly progressing in Kendall. Um, I think there's more Westerners that do both uh, Kendall and Iaido than there are Japanese people that do both. Uh, next one. Hi, Andy. This may sound like a strange question, but it's an important one. If you've ever been hit directly between the door and the tare on the belly between the armor, thank you. Uh, I don't know how I can, I don't quite, can't quite figure that out. Like there shouldn't be a gap between the top of your tare and your door. Um, if there is, then your borgo isn't fitting you properly and it's not protecting you properly. The shinai shouldn't make contact with your, directly with your body. Um, so I haven't experienced that. No, because my door sits on, the, so the tare obi, so you have the tare and then you have the tare obi, which sits around the, the, the lower part of my stomach, the tare obi, and then the door sits on top of that, okay? So that if I'm hit, it's, 
it, it's protecting me. There's no point where um, my my belly is between the door and the tally, okay? Um, if, if that's happening to you, either you're not wearing the armor properly or it doesn't fit you properly, um, okay? Um, nearly there. Uh, hi, Andy. With the current COVID situation preventing us from practicing in Paris, I'm considering buying a Subiri doll from a shop called Kendo Star. Don't know if you've heard of it. Uh, <laughs> but I read that it might lead to developing bad habits, like too much right hand in your strikes because you compensate for the import important weight of the subirito. You said in a previous video that you personally practice a lot with it, um, so I would very much like to hear your take on this. Maybe an, advi maybe an advice on the right way to incorporate it in your subiri routine. Thank you for your answer and the amazing work you're doing in Kendall community. Thank you very much. Um, so, <clears throat> I personally don't think that subirito leads to um, bad habits uh, considerably more than a sh doing subiri with a shinai does. Um, <clears throat> at the end of the day, when you're doing uh, suburi, it's like a kind of like a jishuren or a, a personal rate training on your own. So you need to really be paying attention to what you're doing and how you're swinging the shinai. And that goes for whether you're using a shinai or whether you're using a suburi to, okay? And if you're, you know, you need to be examining that. Don't just swing it. You need to examine, look in the mirror, maybe take videos and stuff like that and check how your suburi is doing. And if you are swinging with the right hand, whether it's with a suburi to or with a shinai, um, then then that you've got a point of correction there that you can work on. Um, I don't think, um, of course, yes, a subirito is heavier. Uh, so that I, I understand the logic behind there is a potential risk that you'll use your right hand more to uh, to, to, to swing the shinai. And that's probably true. Um, that probably is true, actually. Um, but the, 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 the simple advice to that is try not to do that. Um, and I know that sounds like really simple, but that's the fact you have to put the effort in not to pull with your right hand, but to push with your left hand and swing with the left hand. Um, and if you manage to do that, I think the Subiri tool can be a fantastic tool for your, uh, your Subiri practice. Um, and I use it a lot. I use mine a lot. Um, and I, I really do find that they're, they're beneficial. Um, but you do, yeah, if you just keep a check on yourself, I'm sure you'll be absolutely fine. Okay, last one. Many dojos have their national flag and or the Japanese flag at the shoremen side of the dojo. What is the etiquette of this? Should we uh, want to do the same? Thanks. So, <clears throat> uh, yeah, lots of dojos do have their national flag and or the Japanese flag. Uh, in Japan, it's almost every dojo has it. Um, but then almost every, like even if you hire a dojo, like, a, like one of the dojos like I used to teach at, was, uh, it was a school hall it was a school hall that we used to hire but it's normal for them to display the japanese flag in the school hall um so it was not it was totally normal for for the japanese flag to be everywhere um in outside of japan we often don't have our own dojo we often have to rent somewhere um, so having a flag up on display isn't always practical. Uh, there's no specific etiquette for it i don't think it's a bad thing i think it's a good thing to do that um it certainly fits in with the uh the the concept of practicing kendo right the the what's it called yeah the concept of practicing kendo in it the uh kendo shuren no kokorogamai the the second the long paragraph uh that one um so yeah um if you're able to but obviously i understand it's not it's not really practical for a lot of people that are kind of coming and going from a dojo so like my dojo we just hire a hall um that's not our hall, so we can't just leave a flag up on the wall. And I guess we could take one and put one up every time and stuff, but you know we're quite we're, we're in there for an allotted time. We don't have loads of time for that sort of thing, so we don't um, we don't do it at our club um, at the moment anyway. But if, if I had my my own dojo that was always there just for my kendo use, yes, I would have a I'd I'd probably have a um, a national flag and I'd probably have the Japanese flag as well. Um, yeah. <clears throat> that's it uh thanks for joining me for, t for today uh i hope uh hope it was useful uh don't forget to support the channel buy a t-shirt and stuff if you don't want a t-shirt go and buy a tenaguri from kendostar.com or a borgu or a shinai or anything and that will help the channel uh bring these videos to you completely free of charge so if they bring you value whatsoever you need to get to kendostar Dot com. thanks for joining me for today don't forget to uh honor the science click the kendo bell Okay, it's not a prediction, but you could get exponentially better at Kendall. Okay, so subscribe, Kendall Bell. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.